So caller ID. We receive a lot of calls and emails about what caller ID options do we have in the system and is the caller ID the same as a DID? And they're different, you know. The difference between a caller ID and a DID is caller ID is customized per user. So your caller ID doesn't have to be your DID. You have, may have users who don't need DIDs. They don't receive direct inbound calls from customers. So they just need an extension number. They don't need a direct you know, dial number to their, directly to their desk. In a lot of cases, our customers' DID is their caller ID. So if you have a DID like you see in my first screenshot for me, you can see my DID ends in 7535. That is my caller ID because my caller ID field is blank. So two lines above the DID is the caller ID. If that field's blank, it's going to use the DID. If that field was blank and my DID was blank, I wouldn't have a caller ID set for my user. So when I place an outbound call, we would rely on the short tail system to populate a caller ID for this user, for me. In that case, it's going to be your main phone number. So in, you know, in our case, it would send the main phone number out for inflow communications anytime I placed a call. Maybe I don't want that, you know, simply add a DID and it becomes my, my caller ID, or I can customize my caller ID. Some of our customers want their cell phone number to be their caller ID. If you're in the, if you're a real estate, in the real estate market, maybe you don't want them calling your desk phone, you want them calling your cell phone. So when you place that on call, you can actually spoof your, your cell phone caller ID as, you know, as your in outbound calling number. The other thing a lot of our customers, that? sorry, Go I was going to say just real quick, a warning with that. Make sure your carrier supports that. We've had some carriers that will reject the call because the caller ID that you're outpulsing or spoofing out of Shortel doesn't, they don't, it's not within their DID block. So that would just, just a quick uh, caveat there. Yeah, if you have a traditional PRI, you're pretty safe on that. Newer SIP and SIP PRIs, that's usually a feature we need to have your carrier enabled to allow third-party caller ID or enterprise routing, as, as some of the carriers call it. Some of our other customers like the 800 number. So if you work on a sales team or something or in a customer service role, maybe you want your company's 800 number to be your caller ID. You can simply put that in there. And just like Travis said, as long as your carrier allows that or if you own that number, then you're, you're fine using that as a caller ID. Another thing we'll do a lot for our executive teams or management teams is maybe they want their executive assistant their, their DID to be the caller ID. So they can set the executive assistant's phone number as the caller ID number. So when they place an outbound call and a customer wants to call back in, their call still gets screened through their executive assistant instead of going directly to the executive's desk. So a lot of flexibility there. The big thing to remember about caller ID is it's controlled on a per user basis. So every user can have a different caller ID. Every user can have the same caller ID. It's simply controlled from the admin interface log in a shortboard director, expand individual or users, and select on individual users, pick a user, and populate the caller ID field. As you see in the example next to the caller ID field, it does want a plus one for international formatting. In case you do have sites in other countries, it does need a plus one for the US country code. But then you could put an 800 number, a local number, a long distance number into that field.